Hello there. In this presentation, I want to talk you through the Swiss Army knife of um, dental matrix retainers, and that is the Toffelmeyer. This is a real workhorse. Um, even now, when you know, probably we're better known for using sectional bands and the advantages of those, but this band has a wide variety of applications. It's very cheap. It's reusable. There's no disposable plastic with it, and you can use a huge range of bands with it. And we're getting a lot of questions increasingly from dentists curious about what the range is that we sell and what's the point and what are the indications and what sort of customizations can we do to allow us to matrix deep margins and, and things like that. So I wanted to try and give you a bit of an overview today, um, it's sort of an A to Z of top of my retainers. I'm going to start because um, I feel like people do struggle with this. Um, slightly unusual, but um, maybe a little bit of lacking in the, the education of this, is how to load and use the um, Toffelmeyer band itself. Okay, so this is a number one Toffelmeyer band. This is one that's probably used the most, although we don't actually stock this one because there's much more helpful bands out there. Um, but this is kind of the classic. You roll it over like that, and you'll see there's one side here that's nipped in more compared to the top, and that's going to be your cervical portion. Okay. So let's just talk you through this uh, matrix retainer. You've got the U, which is where the matrix sits. You've got the chuck, which um, goes up and down and actually tightens the retainer when it's in place. And then you've got the back screw. So the back screw goes all the way through the top of Maya and it will secure the band to the chuck. That's the first step. Secure the band to the chuck and then tighten the chuck. Okay, so let's talk you through how to load it. I'm going to fold this band over and it's we've got a Think about where do we want the cervical portion to be. Now, when I was taught how to use top of my retainers, I was taught to put them in this way round into the U. Okay, that's the traditional way. Uh, but over the last number of years, uh, not well, I would say exclusively, pretty much, I find that when you go this way, when you get to deep margins, it all starts to become quite unstable. But if we turn it round and put the cervical to the bottom of the U, what we find is that actually gives us something there to stable against. The band's much more uh, steady and it's easier to to um, tighten for deep margins which is where I'm using this band more often. So I prefer to have the U facing up but you can really get it to work either way. Okay, So that's how we're going to put it in. Next thing is how to have it set up. You want the chuck really, this this one, this uh, second screw here is going to tighten the chuck so that tightens the band or loosens it. You want to start with the chuck towards the end and that's because um, that gives you a length to, to tighten the band once it's in the mouth. The back screw, what you don't want to do is um, you can loosen that right off so that it comes out of the chuck. And at that point, it's really unstable. So it needs to be not at the end, otherwise you, that bolt's passing through the chuck, you can't get the band in, but you want it to just rest in the entrance, okay, um, so that it's, it's nice and steady there. Okay, so let's fold that over and push it through. And I always start with it going through um, all of the holes, both the U here and both of the, both, all the way through the chuck as well. So then we're gonna just, sometimes you just need to steady this to stop the whole thing going and we're gonna tighten up that back screw. Okay. And you wanna get this, to be honest, pretty much as tight as you can, okay? Um, if, if, it, if it gets loose there, because you're putting quite a lot of tension when you have it in the mouth, it can ping open. So nice and tight, that band secured to the, to the, um, to the chuck. Right, at that point, you, can, you could put that in anterior regions like premolars, and you'd probably get away with it. Um, but if you're going towards the back of the mouth, then if you put it in like that, it's gonna sort of not be able to fit because it's going through the cheek there. So we're going to um, lift this up and over. So I usually get it in position, then I'll loosen the back um, screw. I'll lift it whichever way I want. So here I'm going to take it from the buckle and have it facing down that way. And then I'll tighten it again. So that band can now go in, into place. Straightforward to place, really. You just press it open a little bit, work it through the contacts. I'm going to tighten this first screw, which is going to pull, I'll show you, just pull the chuck back and that tightens the band and you can wedge the restoration as you like. Okay, this uh, type of shape, see I'm having to work quite hard with a wedge to bring it in um, and get, it, get a seal there. OK, 
okay. When it comes to taking it out, these are particularly good for things like amalgam because you don't have to take the whole thing off like you do with a equivalent band. You can actually um, unscrew the top screw here, which will loosen the band off. Remove the retainer, and then you can peel back both sides. So I don't know, I don't particularly place any amalgams anymore, but uh, I don't know why we didn't use it um, more, whereas the equivalent I find very um, limited, limiting. Okay, so these bands are very flat, and they tend to give you quite a flat uh, contact point, and they're also, they're not very flared, um, by which I mean, if you saw that when it went in the, the on the tooth here, there's not a lot of flare to the um, the band, and so it doesn't tighten especially well on the cervical regions. And you maybe saw that I had to really wedge in there, um, and that gets becomes a problem with deeper and deeper margins because you want it to tighten cervically more, and if it's left open, um, it can be a bit sort of challenging. That's a number one band, the classic one, and it's very flat, and maybe could tighten more cervically. So it's a bit of a problem in that it's so flat, right? So you're not gonna get a nice contour to the band. So that's why you have bands like this that came available, okay? This is a contoured metal band um, that we sell. These are made by Tovian. Very nice hardened steel. You can get them in premolar, molar, and extra large size. And also, you know, you'll have seen that you can get these on the, um, those uh, plastic retainers. So this is, has got a natural curve to the band, okay? And so you're gonna get um, some contour to the restoration. So they're a significant step up from um, that number one band that we talked about. So let's just load this curved band in. Now, the downside to these, because they're curved, is they can be a little bit more difficult to seat, especially if it's very tight um, in this region here. Um, but if they will go down, they'll give you a nice curve. And I tend to use these a little bit, um, maybe for, uh, provisional restorations with uh, glass anima and um, if I've done like a quite often I'll do like an exploratory treatment where I'll take all the filling out maybe access the tooth if it needs endo um, and then sort of do a really decent build up or a, if I know I'm going to do a crown I might do a core um, with one of these just to give it a decent sort of finish and um, don't use them so much for definitive uh, composite I prefer to use a sectional band and um, because while these are curved, as you tighten the band up, they do flatten out, um, and so I, I, pref I, I do prefer um, a sectional band. Also, it's always difficult doing mesial and distal with a circumferential retainer like this. You can ten tend to get one side right, but the other side will then lift up, and so you do get some. You do sometimes get some issues with that. See how it's pulling well away there. It's going to be difficult, so it's always preferred to do uh, one contact at a time. But the, that's the rationale for these uh, curve bands. And, and yes, I, I know these are very popular in the plastic retainers, but if you can use it in a Toffelmo band, you're going to save yourself a lot of money and um, you know, it's better for the environment and, and they're, you know, they're really easy to use. Okay, so probably the next logical place to go is to have a look at these more curved bands. Okay, so these became popular in America a number of years ago. Um, we developed uh, one of the companies and, and we got a version that's been made up. Um, nice hard and still you want these nice and stiff. So what happens when you curve the top of my more? Well, when we go ahead and take that and roll it over, you'll see that that band now has a lot steeper curve to it and it nips a lot more cervically. And these are generally much better for doing subgingival cavities because they flare out more, you get a better contact and all those things. The downside with them is they're still flat. Um, so I particularly like these bands for core build-ups, um, deep margin elevations, um, anywhere where you're trying to get very deep, um, they're, they're really helpful. And the other thing is they kind of nip down like that naturally, so you can push it in a bit further if you like, but it's quite helpful that to get down uh, to uh, where you're trying to get. So once we're here, okay, we can then open this band up and try and seat it. Now, the downside to these bands is because they are more curved, they can be harder to place, and they work better on more broken down teeth. If you imagine those flares coming in, it, it can be quite hard to actually get around the marginal ridge of the other sides uh, to get them down. So if the tooth, um, and we'll come on to deep margin elevations uh, a little bit later, but if the tooth has got one contact in place, or it's very um, close here, you're actually better off with a um, like a number one band or something less curved um, 
so that it's easier to actually place the band. So if you're struggling with these getting these in, go with a, 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 a less curved band. And that goes for this range. So these bands, these U bands that we sell, they come in a various number of curves. The basically rule of thumb is the more broken down tooth, the more it's gonna nip in, the better it'll seal cervically. Um, but it has to, has to be broken down to really get in. Um, to be honest, turn this chuck here, and that's gonna tighten it up. And they do create this wonderful uh, funnel like shape, um, these bands. And I would say generally, they're a big upgrade, as long as you can get them on to a flat band. Okay, look at that funnel. See how it's much better it's sitting on the distal um, compared to when I had the number one band going in. Okay, and we can place the wedge, which will sort that open contact there out. Um, and that'd be great for uh, maybe it's an amalgam or composite but again the problem you've got is you've got a very flat contact coming there um, so much prefer sectional bands um, but they're very good for core builds and um, say provisionals and loads of things like that they're very helpful for and just sealing cervically you know you're trying to do a, a little margin elevation or something so I'll just very quickly show you the wide version of the u-band so we've just done the standard and the wide one's very similar in curve it's just a little taller and that can be really helpful to get a contact point if you have got a deep margin. It just gives you a little bit more height, um, but that's really the only um, difference with that band. Now the final one I'll show you is the curved band. And we do a really nice little 24 pack of, of these uh, cu different curved bands so we can get started. It's worth having a few of each in the drawer. Um, you never know when you're going to need them. But you'll see this one when we get that pinched, it's even more fluted. Okay, And so when you've got big bridging gaps, which is the gap um, between the base of the cavity and the adjacent tooth that you want to get over a long way, which you know often we do want a very steep emergence when we're doing deep margin elevations, then these can be um, these can be super helpful. Right, here you go. So can you see this tooth is very broken down? This is a very fluted um, band. Just gonna make it a bit bigger. And you'll see the problem you get, this is the problem you get with all of these curved bands, is it starts to get very difficult to actually place it because it's gets almost too curved mm, for the for the cavity that you might be going for. But it really gives you this huge skirt um, to, to build with. Um, these are, but because all of these flare so much, they're particularly good for things like, um, which you'll hopefully have heard of, like a matrix in matrix technique. So sometimes if you just can't get it to seal at the base, um, you can take a sectional band and, and put that in uh, like this in, inside the other one to get a seal and then pack some PTFE. They, they really invite the second band in because they flare so much um, which can be really helpful. Okay so we've done dealt with the U bands, the, the more curved ones. The next innovation I want to talk you through is this thinner band. Okay so this is, you maybe you've seen these before, these deep margin elevation bands and you've wondered what is going on here and why, what is the point of this innovation. Okay so a DME band is basically a um, a standard U-band that's been cut thinner in this middle portion. So why why has that been done? Well, when you fold the band over, you still get that really nice steep emergence profile, but you have a much thinner band. Okay, and this was popularised by a dentist called Pascal Manier um, when he talks about these deep margin elevations and he. In his paper, there's this published technique with this thinner band. Okay, so what is the point of these bands, the deep margin elevation band? Well, the point is that the band is thinner, okay? And they work particularly well, they're really designed for, where you have a, um, a contact point on one side, but not on the other, because the band is able to pass down here, past the height of contour, past the curve here, which would stop the band from tightening as much. You can get past, just get it around, you can get past that curve down onto the root surface, not be held here on the contour and be able to tighten right down, okay? So it is also helpful when you've got no contact on one side or both sides, sorry, because it'll get past the curve, but it's particularly good when you've got a contact one side, it'll get past and then allow you to tighten in more. So the downside with them is they can be a little bit more tricky to place because the band is, is thinner and more delicate. Okay, and that is one of the reasons why we brought out our, our, our version of this. There was an original manufacturer that made the DME band um, a few years ago, 
but it was made from a soft metal. Okay, and that is the opposite of what you want for this. You really want a really stiff band because when you're using these, you're trying to get deep and down on, onto the cavity. So again, a little bit more effort than usual, I would say, just to get them through the contacts because they are a bit thin. Sometimes you end up having to go through a couple of bands before you get it just right. So you can slide that down and then we can tighten it up. And what I would recommend to you is you try and get, just tighten it up a little bit, try and sometimes you can pull the band around and try and get the retainer to the opposite side here, okay? If you get it there and twist it out, you'll be able to get a lot better tightening on it than if you have it where, the, where you're on the actual margin that you're working to. You want to be on the opposite. If you're trying to tighten it easily, you want to be onto the distal. Um, and often they work like that, one margin at a time. So you can then tighten this right up. This is a very difficult cavity. It's one we're doing on our, on our course where it's got a negative concavity, so it won't work too well. Um, and that's because metals do, don't work very well in concavities. But you can pull that right tight and you've got a, a nice... Um, tight band there. The other thing that um, Pascal Manier uh, talked about in his article was putting another band and putting it, so th this is the active retainer that's pulling it really nice and tight, it's giving you a nice divergence, and then you could put another matrix band inside, so here I've got something like a saddle band, um, or maybe a, uh, you could use a mylar, or in, the, in the original article it was a number one band that was cut, and you can push this inside the uh, deep, this uh, deep DME band um, horizontally or vertically. Okay, and you can see that even though that's a really difficult negative margin, we can get a good seal on it. Okay, wouldn't try and build the whole contact here. We're just going to build a little hip, um, and then that will allow us um, to build the restoration potentially in two with a two-stage kind of technique. Okay, so, so DME bands, one, they work quite well just on their own, but you can also push in another band inside them and that allows them to project deeper and that was in the original um, article and how they were described. Now they're quite nice to be sold off the bat and we, they're really popular actually, we sell quite a few of those, um, but you can of course make your own DME band. You can take a standard band like this, okay? You can take, we've got some lovely sharp scissors that we sell on the website. Um, really, really good these. Um, cut it short and curve out. Okay, so it's not beyond the wit, not beyond the wit of man just to, to make one up yourself if you, if you should wish. And what's quite nice is you can do like that with the DME band, but you could also you could take one of the more curved bands. So one of the problems you get with DME is it's not curved enough even then. And you can take this and just hollow out and then and I suppose one of the reasons we make them is because it's quite hard to get these perfectly smooth otherwise um, and you know, it can be a bit of time clinically to get that right you see there I've just kind of undercut this bit so it's quite nice to have some standard ones available to buy um, and I do use them to be honest but I'm quite happy as well if I need a more curved one I'll go ahead and just make that up for myself so that's going to give me even more flair because it's a more curved band. Okay, okay. so the last innovation I want to talk you through is these um, lobes. So this is a classic number two band that we sell. Um, these are not very curved, quite upright, um, but they have these two um, additional lobes. You can also get them with one lobe. We tend to recommend we sell them with two generally because then you could use two deep areas or customise to one. Normally you, you want to customise them to be honest, um, but it gives you the flexibility to do either. So these two lobes here, basically it allows you to have one side of the band going a lot deeper than the other side, okay? And that height will allow you to capture a deep margin um, really well. Now on a number two band you're doing this when it's quite flat and you're trying to get down tight, so a cavity maybe a little bit like here, where you've got, um, you know, not a very big bridging gap. You'd be better with a flatter band like this, um, because you want to get deep on one side, but there's not a big bridging gap, and a more curved band won't seat. So, so you've got it like that. Now, um, let's just pretend that we're trying to get deep on the, um, the mesial surface here. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take this band and we're going to cut one of the lobes off. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter because you can just fold it the other way. Um, so if you cut the wrong one, that one does the distal. But if I folded the band the other way around, it would... It, sorry, if I fold it this way, it would be the mesial. If I fold it this way, it would be the distal. And that's why you can buy a band just like this to do the same job. Um, the reason we tend to sell them with two lobes is that you could then do both if you if you so so wanted or chose to. Open it up, should fit reasonably easily because it's quite a flat band. Okay. Just as a tighten, I'm just going to bring the retainer around to the distal because it's going to tighten better that way. So you can just sort of pull it a bit. Get that lobe to be right where we want it, which is where the deep margin is, and then you can go ahead and, and tighten that up. Okay, so that's a really nice um, technique for getting to deeper margins because that projection will really go low, and because you've cut off the other one, this one will raise higher, so you can get it really down deep on the side that you haven't cut. Okay, so the last band I want to talk you through is this one here. This is the V band, and this is actually um, designed by Incidental, and we got Torvm to make them up. So what we're trying to do here is combine the extra curve, the best features of these standard U-bands, okay, but then also the advantage of those lobes. So that will give you a band that is more curved and flared, but also deeper, and this will get you the deepest of, of, all, of all the bands, really. So you can go ahead and if you've only got one deep margin, which you normally do, you can take one of these sides off. If you had two deep margins or something like that, you, you have got the option to keep two. Um, but you've got that shape and then you can do a mesial margin or a, or a distal margin. And they will get you in um, even, I would say, the deepest of all the bands that we, we, we do. Okay, so is there more innovation you can do? Well, um, yes there is, because what you can do is take this V-band that's clipped to go low, and you can also thin it down to make it a DME band as well. Um, so you're getting past the contour to allow it to tighten more, and you are keeping that deep lobe, which will um, get you down deeper as well. And I don't know whether we should make one um, of this pattern just to save people having to do the um, to the cutting. Um, probably will. It's just I feel like people are getting confused with the number of bands, and we try and always to 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 simplify things for people. But I think maybe having these pre-made uh, would be would be helpful. So this is my like <laughs> last resort if I want to get really deep. And um, this would be the band I would sort of customize and go to. So pop that in, you can see it's going to go through the contour contact, get very, very deep, and pull in, and give you a lot of flare, um, which is which is super helpful. So I hope you've enjoyed that little discussion about Toffelmeyer bands and retainers, and hopefully you can see why we stock the range that we do on the website. Sometimes you're going to want a curved band. You're trying to create an anatomically uh, nice contact contour uh, with a provisional or a core. Sometimes you're going to want to get down into a, uh, a low bridging space where it's tight, so you might need a flatter band. More often you're going to want like a standard curved or a more curved band so you can nip in cervically and seal that better. Um, and sometimes you want that the full height so that you can build up the full core or provisional. Sometimes though, it's better to have it cut down thinner, okay? And you could customise that yourself, but that thinness allows it to pass through um, the contact area past the, the curvature of the tooth and tighten more, which can be really helpful. And finally, sometimes you're going to want these little lugs here and here. Take one off or keep both so that you can get deeper on one side to the other. Um, and that's another help that's out there. Um, as I say, they're all available on the website. They're all made of um, hardened stainless steel, which is what I think you want for these. You want them to be um, nice and rigid. You're trying to use them in deep margins normally. Um, and we've also got the retainers, which are, are really reasonably priced. It's much, much more economical um, to work with a retainer and get confident with it than use plastic ones. Because as you can see here, you can use a huge variety of bands um, and for a 
you know, really quite a low startup costs. You can do a lot of different matrixing situations. Okay, uh, thanks ever so much for listening. And, um, you know, we've put this together because we've got asked a lot of questions about this. So I hope this satisfies them and um, get in touch and we'll try and do um, more demonstrations as, as we can.